Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of cryptocurrency mining, and to kick things off, we've got Vladimir Smirkis, who's going to break it down in simple terms. Let's hear what he has to say. To put it simple, friends, in a nutshell, just imagine you have a computer like mine. It is doing something useful and is rewarded for it in some way. This is what mining is. But if we speak in slightly more complex terms and try to understand what's going on and why this computer should receive coins for its work, we should know that the miner or computer solves specific mathematical problems to confirm transactions in some blockchain. But not in any blockchain, because in our days, some blockchains run on a proof-of-stake basis or proof-of-stake algorithm. Nevertheless, the most popular currency that can still be mined is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is currently the most mined and mining-focused cryptocurrency in the world. There are really huge enterprises that participate in Bitcoin mining at a professional level. They have dozens, hundreds, thousands of computers that are all connected to the network. They are often called ASICs, after the name of one of the most popular manufacturers. There are also other manufacturers, like Antminer, for example. In general, it is a massive professional activity that helps the industry to ensure that decentralization exists, so there is no single center where information is stored, where someone can come, take out the server, and seize the information. We absolutely love full decentralization and true decentralization in the Bitcoin and blockchain enthusiast community and mining is that very thing that makes it possible. When you send someone some cryptocurrency, let's say one Bitcoin and you must be wealthy enough for that, your transaction is sent to the network and miners confirm this transaction. When multiple miners verify this transaction, your transaction is marked as approved and the person on the other end, so to speak, of the crypto pipeline, receives their cryptocurrency. To put it simple, this is how mining works. Miners are solving complex mathematical problems. It is their job, their working algorithm, fundamentally in essence. They confirm your transaction and create a new block with some information. This block can include significant number of various transactions on a particular blockchain that operates on the proof-of-work system, on the mining system, in simple terms. And when a new block appears in the network, your transaction is effectively confirmed and stored there forever. You can return to it even in 5 to 10 years. We just don't have many examples of 10 years old transactions yet. Back then, 10 years ago, there were only some crypto enthusiasts who were just starting out. However, the transaction definitely cannot be tampered with, reversed or altered in any way. This is the essence of full decentralization. Why is a huge amount of electricity being used? Why do people buy costly mining machines or highly specialized mining computers? Because they get significantly rewarded for it. The reward is in the network's native currency. They are essentially mining in the process. And this is a very profitable business. According to my calculations, over the past five years, the profitability of mining has averaged approximately 50% per year in US dollars. But why can't you just buy Bitcoin, for example, and profit from the increase of its market price? Miners explain it in a following way. In mining, Bitcoin costs you less than its market price. For example, if Bitcoin is priced at approximately $70,000 on the market, you can mine it for 65, 60, or even 55, depending on various factors such as your location, because several different factors, including geographical location, electricity costs, and hardware efficiency, influence the cost of Bitcoin mining. The cost of the cryptocurrency itself, the cost of electricity, the cost of equipment, and all these additional factors, and of course, maintenance, how you maintain the equipment, water cooling, air cooling, whether you frequently change your equipment, how energy efficient your equipment is. New miners are emerging. They become more and more energy efficient, and it is no longer that profitable to mine with older equipment. Each machine has a certain resource to mine efficiently and stay profitable. Mining equipment breaks down from time to time, so all these aspects are very important and can make mining truly efficient, attractive, and interesting. Thus, mining is a process meant to ensure that your transactions in the blockchain are secure, 100% confirmed and verified, and also absolutely transparent. Knowing your wallet address, I can see how many bitcoins you own and to which addresses of other network participants you have sent your bitcoins. In general, transparency and anonymity coexist in bitcoin. 
Thanks Vladimir for that clear and insightful explanation. Now, to build on that, let's dig a little deeper. Mining isn't just about solving puzzles, it's a crucial part of keeping the entire cryptocurrency network secure and decentralized. But there's more to the story. Bitcoin mining gets even more interesting when we talk about halving and the limited supply of Bitcoins. And to explain halving, let's listen to our guest, Andrei Markelov. What is halving? Why it is reduced by half? Why do we need it at all in the Bitcoin economic system? Well, let's start with the basic concept, the very basics. It's quite simple. You mine gold, there's not much gold, and it's expensive. The rarity of something makes its price high. Of course, this something still needs to be in demand. By the way, a little off topic here, something people don't think about is that for something to have value, it also should be in demand by others. You have to sell it to people. If you can't sell it, if you sell it only through marketing, and if you don't have good marketing, no one needs it, it won't be worth anything. This applies to all new coins that are being launched. So what creates the value of Bitcoin? It no longer needs to be sold, it's already sold. That's it, like Xerox is a photocopier, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. that's all. Nothing else is needed here, it has a life of its own. But let's talk about halving. So, you have an emission, there are definitely 21 million coins. And you need to make sure that all the people who turn on all the ASICs don't take it all at once. You need to make sure that they would sign the transactions, and there would be some kind of equality and so on. They all should participate. But I think that having, well, the network difficulty itself is okay. But I think that halving in Bitcoin was done either unintentionally, or, I don't know why, in a way that it really encourages greed. So you bought an ASIC and it gives you about 100 terahash. Then halving occurs, cutting the reward in half, and bam, it leaves you with 50 terahash and only the half of income. I have the theory that when people invented Bitcoin, they could not imagine that such powerful devices would exist, and that the difficulty would be like we have it now. Maybe they thought the increase would be linear, rather smooth, and that's why they decided to cut it in half every four years to make the process more interesting. So do you find the current halving algorithm not very efficient? Right now it generates crazy level of greed. Huge crowds of people were mining and bam, it got cut off, minus two. And the whole market just went south. So it has a very strong impact. Halving affects the market in a crazy way. Well, you think it affects it in the bad way, at least not as it was intended by the great Satoshi Nakamoto. I think he really didn't anticipate that there would be such a wild power and that such craziness would emerge. I think everything should have been calmer, but now halving has a very strong impact. I believe that the amount of investments is disproportional. Huge sums of money are lost due to such strong turbulence. Because the process itself... Old money, generally speaking, are not designed to be so volatile. Yes, you set up the platform, you bought the hardware, you hired people, organized maintenance and so on, and then halving happens. I think it is especially problematic and disturbing for traditional investors. Yes, it definitely makes people doubt. Our clients, who are extremely experienced, are very well prepared for the halving in advance. They don't wait for prices of equipment to drop. They gradually sell off their old equipment, then look around and ask, what's new on the way? They know that something new will come to the market. We tell them, this is what's on the way. They say, okay, we'll buy this. They gradually update their fleet. People who have just, well, recently gotten into mining deserve some sympathy, condolences for finding themselves in this situation. Well, because for some people it might not just be, you know, spare money, it could be their last money, right? They bought an ASIC, thought they would make money, and then having a curse. Well, thank God we know exactly when it happens, every four years, mm. so it's predictable. Well, the next one won't be soon, so I think the market will stabilize and settle down. New powerful ASICs will be released, and the story will repeat itself. But when that moment comes, when the last Bitcoin is mined, what will happen then? How should I know? It wasn't me who created it. Well, it's a difficult question. I think it's impossible to mine the last Bitcoin. There will just be a number 0000, who knows what. Look, open the blockchain explorer, check how the first block was signed. The hash at the beginning had eight zeros. The miner's job in early days was to generate the number with the hash of eight zeros. Right now, I think it's 23 or 24. You see, the task will be mega difficult. Let me explain. So I'll give you two dice, standard dices, and I'll tell you to roll them until you get a six. For both of them. You'll roll them, and you'll get a six. Then I'll give you 30 dice. And I'll say, shake and roll them until all of them show six. That could take you seven days or more. The same way mining tasks will become very difficult, meaning that generation of a hash would require so much power for the transaction to be signed that billions of miners would be required. And it's hard to predict what would go on on the market, i.e., what kind of technology would be required for that. 
In general, mining seems to stay with us forever. Even if there is no Bitcoin, mining will still be with us because there are altcoins. This is an industry, you see. There is a large customer base worldwide, a large number of devices. People already understand how it works. So how can a business, any business structure, give up on something? It won't happen. It. No matter what people think of mining now, there are those who, for example, bought ASICs in 2021 when the rate was 70. They lost money, but they are still mining anyway. In the long run, holding crypto and mining have always worked. Regardless of what's happening with the market, you just bought it, it sits there, it grows, that's it. I don't see any difference right now. If you decide to buy either Solana, Ether or Bitcoin today, it will grow more or less in the equal way. So, as you've seen, mining is not just about earning cryptocurrencies. It's about maintaining the entire blockchain network and ensuring its future. And while Bitcoin's supply is capped at 21 million, the demand and innovation in this space are limitless. Who knows what the future holds? That's all for today's dive into the world of mining. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more crypto content. Let's continue exploring this incredible world together.